Hey guys, welcome back. So glad that you're here. Let's go ahead and dive into your first chord and diagrams. Now, uh, this is a momentous moment <laughs> uh, for you because what we're going to be touching on is something that's really, really important. So we're going to lock, we're going to, we're going to unlock your first, uh, your first chord, and then we're going to talk about how important chord diagrams are. So let's go ahead and get started. So today, what we're going to be covering is fretting notes. Uh, we're just going to briefly touch on that one more time so we're familiar with it. We're going to talk about the D major chord, how in the world we go about doing that. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how do we practice this. And then lastly, we're going to talk about an invaluable skill. All right, so first things first, fretting notes. Now, you're already familiar with this, but we just want to review and make sure that we're good to go, okay? So fretting notes. S step one, we want to make sure that our fingers are pointy. Now, you remember this uh, when we talked about it previously. But we want to make sure our fingers are pointy, not flat. <clears throat> okay. All right. The next thing is we want to be holding down the strings a little harder than we think we should. All right. So really pull those strings into the fretboard. That's going to give you clarity. That's going to give you uh, th that's going to give you the sound and the tone that you want. Okay. All right. We want to make sure our fingers are in the middle of the fret. All right. We don't want it off to one side. And then we also want to make sure that our thumb is behind the neck of the guitar, giving us good support, okay, as we're, as we're playing. Because we actually need something to pull those strings into. We, we are pulling them into the neck, of course, but we want to make sure that we're actually pulling those into, the, uh, into our thumb as well, okay? That's going to give us some good support that we're going to need. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in to the D major chord, all right? Are you ready? So... <laughs> Chords are just fretting a few notes all at once, all right? Now, it's it's going to feel like a strange configuration of your fingers, I, I promise. <laughs> so we'll start there. But then also, we want to make sure that we apply all four of those tips that we just talked about, okay? So chords are just fretting a few notes at once. So let's go ahead and find some intersections uh, with our fingers pointy, our, 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 uh, our fingers holding down the strings a little harder than we think we should, with our fingers in the middle of the fret, and our thumb behind the neck of the guitar. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and find with our first finger the third string second fret. All right, now you want to keep your fingers uh, uh, down on the strings, okay? So, got our first finger on the third string second fret. Then we're going to place our second finger on the first string second fret. Notice how I'm still in the middle of that fret. Uh, there with both of my fingers as much as I can be right still got my fingers pointy all of my fingers are pointy and my thumbs behind the neck and then with our third finger we're gonna find the second string on the third fret all right so uh, let's take it off and let's try it one more time again together okay here we go let's find with our first finger the third string second fret with our second finger, the first string, second fret. And with our third finger, the second string and third fret. All right, so that's the D chord. Again, we wanna apply all those tips that we were just talking about, those four tips, really, really important. Uh, so make sure that you're uh, going back and reviewing that if, uh, if you're getting a little bit of a thunk or, or a clud sound, all right? So uh, let's go ahead and play this together. We're gonna actually play four strings. So remember our rest stroke? We're going to play four strings, starting on the fourth string, going all the way down to the first string, and landing on the body like we've talked about before. So here we go. Now, <laughs> if you hear a little bit of a thunk or a clud, that's totally normal, all right? We just want to review those four tips, and we want to make sure that our fingers aren't touching any other strings, of course, uh, just the strings that they're on, right? And we want to make sure that our fingertips are pointy, we're pulling those strings into the neck, our thumbs behind the neck of the guitar as well, and our, our fingers are in the middle of those frets. All right, so really pull those strings in. Uh, some common things that can go wrong here are folks can, okay, I've got the D chord on, but my, my fingers are kind of touching some other strings because they're not quite pointy. We want to make our fingers really, really pointy. And the other common thing that can happen uh, is, that, is that we're not quite holding the strings down hard enough because it is a new feeling for us, okay? Nobody goes around putting their fingers on little tiny pieces of string and trying to push them into a piece of wood. That's just a new feeling uh, for anybody. So uh, all I'm really concerned about 
is that you uh, find this shape and that you just um, keep doing it over and over again, all right? Kind of get that muscle memory going. Now, let's talk about that. How do we actually go about practicing this? So, repetition, 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 all right? That's the biggest thing. Um, it's kind of like this. If you want to uh, 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 throw a ring onto a, a, onto a peg and you want to you want to land it on that peg every single time. Say you're playing horseshoes or you're playing some other game. Uh, you got to do it over and over again, right? To get really good, to kind of feel what that feels like in order to get it not too much, uh, not too much acceleration, um, but also not too little so that you actually land it, you know, the right angle. So there's just all these things that, that kind of go into it. Now, this is pretty simple. And, uh, and we're going to talk about how I can actually help you out in just a sec how I can make sure you do it accurately every single time. But repetition is the biggest thing. So we want to place it on and take it off. Place it on and take it off. Place it on, 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 take it off. Now, let me give you a little hint about practice, okay? What you practice is what you're going to play. So make sure you're accurate. Don't place the cord on unless you know exactly where it's going because what you practice is what you're gonna play. All right, so for instance, if you practice correctly and you, you nail that cord 50% of the time when you're practicing, then when you go play it for your friends, you're gonna nail it 50% of the time, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're nailing the cord 100% of the time, even if it's super, super, super slow, okay? Because what you practice, is what you'll play, all right? All right, now here's another way we can practice. Go ahead and play along with your own music now. Start jamming now, start enjoying yourself. Even if it doesn't quite make sense, <laughs> start playing along with some music. Uh, and, and we'll get to the place where we'll be able to play real songs and, and actually be able to play along with songs and know um, kind of what they're doing and what we can do and what would sound good together. Uh, but for now, go ahead and start jamming. That's really gonna go ahead and, and solidify this particular chord in your hands uh, and in your mind, all right? So let's go ahead and uh, let's talk about a super invaluable skill. Okay, this is the key that unlocks all future chords for you. All right, so we're gonna talk about how to read a chord diagram and we're actually gonna deal with a real chord diagram, all right? So let's go ahead and look at that together. So we've got the D major chord, right? We just talked about that. We just learned it, first finger, third string, second fret, second finger, first string, second fret, third finger, second string, third fret, all right? We just learned that one, so we're familiar with it. Now, this is what a chord diagram looks like. So this is the key that unlocks all future chords for you. But it also unlocks the ability for you to be able to play all chords accurately, okay? So let's take a look at it together. I mentioned that, uh, that there's a few things that we wanna see on this, uh, on this diagram. So let's take a look at that. We wanna see the nut, the frets, the strings, our finger numbers, and the strings to play and not to play. So here they are, <clears throat> pretty simple. Let's take a look at the top of the diagram. Now you see the word D major, of course, or the, or the, the, the letter D and the word major, all right? That's the chord that we're playing. So it's gonna be labeled like that. And then you see right below that the two X's and the O, all right? Usually when you put an X on something, it's saying, don't do this or don't enter or, uh, you know, whatever you do, don't, right? <laughs> uh, so the X's actually signify that we're not going to be playing those two strings, okay? Now, I mentioned just a second ago that we're playing four strings, right? So we're obviously playing not the top two strings, so not the fifth and the sixth string. We're just playing the four strings. So the fourth string, one, two, three, four, remember our string numbers? one, two, three, four, uh, we're gonna play. So that O right above the fourth string, so six, five, four, the O right above the fourth string is signifying that we're gonna be playing that string open, okay? That means that we're not gonna be uh, putting our finger on the string, but we're still gonna be playing it. It's gonna be played open. In other words, we're not holding it down, it's open, all right? So we're playing it, uh, the, the fourth string, as well as, then let's move down to the third string. Now, do you see, do you see these, uh, do you see how this is divided? It's, it's almost like a chart. 
but if you take a look at your guitar and you take your guitar and look at it just like this straight on and you look at the chord diagram what you're gonna see is your thickest strings on the left and your thinnest strings on the right now take a look at the chord diagram okay the thickest strings on the left and the thinnest string is on the right all right so that's that's a pretty easy way uh, hopefully to remember where the strings are because <laughs> it could get confusing so just make sure the thickest strings on the left hand side and the thinnest strings on the right hand side and if you if you get a little confused just remember okay i know how to play the d major chord one two three right okay now i'm going to look at the chord diagram there it is so i got it you know my second finger's on the thinnest string so we've got frets on the chord diagram of course you see the nut up there at the top that th the thicker uh, black line up there at the top that signifies the nut of the guitar and then each space below that would be the first fret the second fret where you see the numbers one and two and the third fret where you see the number three and then of course there's the fourth fret and the fifth fret underneath all right and then our, our finger numbers are signified by numbers and inside of those black dots and our first finger is going to be on the third string second fret so i hope you can see that it's there uh, and then our second finger is going to be on the first string and the second fret and then our third finger is going to be on the second string third fret okay so hopefully you see all that hopefully that all makes sense to you uh if you if you need a moment to process it that's totally fine it's totally understandable um just go back and uh, and spend a little bit more time thinking through chord diagrams because they, they really are the key to unlocking all future chords and i'm really really excited for you to have that have that gift and that ability to be able to uh, to be able to do that okay so let's uh let's take a, a look at what we talked about today so we talked about fretting notes just a really quick uh, overview of that a little review of that we talked about the d major chord uh, we talked about how do we practice right how do we practice chords repetition 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 uh, and then we talked about an invaluable skill all right so what's next well we're going to put some of this stuff to use with our first strum pattern, okay? So what do you do? Well, don't practice this chord until you can do it right. Practice until you can't get it wrong, right? That's really, really important with chords. Uh, like we were just saying a second ago, we want to make sure it's accurate. We want to make sure we do it right 100% of the time uh, because if we do it right 50% of the time in practice, you know, when we play it out in public, we'll do it right 50% of the time. So we want to be 100% accurate. Use that chord diagram to help you, to serve you. Uh, and so in other words, practice that D major chord until it's uh, similar to what I'm doing. It's easy for you and you can teach it to someone else. All right. All right. We'll see you next time when we get back together.